Hello and welcome to Tales from the Pit, the behind the lens access to the entertainment world and the creative people involved. Today, we have special guests, Tom Reardon, guitar tech and stage manager. Tom, welcome to the show. Thanks for being here. Hey, bud. Great to be here. Awesome. Thank you so much. So we usually like to get started with sort of a little history behind how you got started. What was your influence growing up and that sort of, you know, quick bird's eye view of that. Can you kind of break that down for us? So I have always been interested in the music world and the business end behind it. Um, I started playing guitar at a very young age. Um, and as far as getting into the music end of it, the business and touring world, um, my uncle um, was a rigger and uh, was actually the lead rigger for many tours throughout the 80s and 90s. Um, more popularly, he was the rigger for, let's see here, Journey. Um, he was actually in their documentary. Um, let's see here, who else? Um, uh, some little guy called Michael Jackson at the time. Um, he did the Super Bowl every year. And more notably, which really brought me into the music world, was I got to watch, I guess, uh, the chaos of Woodstock 99 from stage left backstage. Oh, wow. um, I went there. My mother actually had brought me when I was a, a, you know, a teenager to Woodstock 99 to watch my Uncle Bobby work. And up until that point, much like everyone else, you know, you kind of go to these rock and roll shows and you get in your seat and you get to watch this amazing show and really have no idea what went on to put that on. Um, and it just kind of, you walk in and there's this awesome show. And like I said, there's a whole community of people that make these shows happen. Um, so I got to witness that for many years of my life, growing up, watching my uncle do this and tour the entire world. And I went, wow, you know, that's really cool. Well, I'm afraid of heights. So I don't want to, you know, go, uh, you know, 60 feet above an arena floor, but I'm sure there's something else I can do. So being a guitar player and uh, a gear nerd, you know, I uh, kind of landed in the uh, role of uh, being a guitar technician. So that's awesome. That's, how, that's kind of how, so you guess you can kind of say it's almost like the family business. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of what landed me into the curiosity of touring the world as a crew member and, uh, you know, wanting to, uh, you know, do my part in the music community to make uh, people that spend all this money to come to rock shows, uh, enjoy them and know that their well, their money is being spent very well. And uh, these shows go off without a hitch and without a problem. And if something happens, you know, we're the guys that mysteriously make it all work without ever skipping a beat or noticing that something's gone wrong. Yeah, def we'll, we'll definitely dive into a lot of that. I mean, you, you've, You've been working with a ton of my favorite bands. I've seen you work many, many times. I, I kind of want to get to all that stuff in just a moment. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit more about the younger days. So guitar playing, what, were your, what was your influence uh, growing up guitar-wise? So um, and you'll probably see this in the background in the video here when we cut away to clips and stuff. Um, growing up, uh, my, uh, my biggest influence was uh, Ace Frehley from Kiss. Um, I remember being a little kid and just watching these guys go on stage and blow things up and play these amazing rock and roll anthems and you know being a young child I went, man that's really cool that's kind of what i want to do and uh sure enough i uh, saved up my allowance money and got my first guitar and learned every single kiss song i could you know what was no what was that first guitar so i had a my first guitar it was actually somewhere over here it was a little acoustic guitar i bought for 90 dollars um <laughs> and uh much like any guitar player, you know, you just can't have that one guitar. Uh, you know, I remember begging my mom being like, hey, I really need an electric guitar. I can't kind of, I can't hit all these notes up high, so I need an electric guitar. So I got a uh, Fender Stratocaster with this little tiny amplifier and a distortion pedal because I had to have distortion. You know, that's, you can't play rock with, without distortion. So Of course. Um, so I, I got that. And uh, once I learned how to do all that kind of fun stuff with uh, an electric guitar, the uh, the mighty Van Halen became playing on my stereo all the time, and just like Kiss, you know, I sat down and you know with the song book and the tab books, and those became my Bible, if you would say. Um, 
And I mean, I, I, you could say I got bit by the rock and roll bug bad, you know, and I was all about eight years old <laughs> when this all happened. So, but, you know, it's, uh, that's kind of where, where my story began with that. And over time, it just, you know, I've gotten, I, things evolved and, you know, Slayer happened and bands like At The Gates happened and, uh, you know, the, the ball just kept rolling. And you know, now I listen to everything from, uh, I guess, progressive jazz to uh, Cannibal Courts. <laughs> <laughs> everything in between. That's, a qu- yeah. that's a, quite, a, quite a mix in between, too. Yeah. Oh, Absolutely. Yeah. So. That, that's awesome, dude. The, um, uh, and we'll get sort of uh, into, the, into the first run, but h- did you have any training prior to doing any of this stuff? Did you so, have any education in any of this? No. So I was just always a, uh, you know, a big nerd when it came to gear. Um, I've always wanted to know how you know, certain things worked. Um, you know, when I was going through high school and after high school, um, you know, I was a diesel mechanic for many years. So taking things apart and putting them back together was always a big thing in my life. And, uh, but I always played around with guitars and amplifiers and, uh, you know, very similar to the Eddie Van Halen stories of, you know, you know, you connect A to B and, you know, C to A sometimes, you know, you get weird sounds and you make it electrocuted, you may make something cool. <laughs> um, so, you know, you kind of, get bit a few times and then you learn not to do that. And then you figure out the right way to do it. And, you know, <laughs> I guess the rest is kind of history. So I, you know, I right. learned how to, I, I always wanted to modify my amplifiers and my guitars. And at the time when I was doing it, I never really kind of pictured that I would be one of these guys sitting in, in an arena somewhere, uh, you know, rebuilding an amplifier for somebody because it got broken by the shipping company the night, the night before or, um, you know, or one of my guitar players that I'm working for, you know, had a strap failure and their guitar hit a wall doing a guitar spin and you had to repair the neck, which that's a story we'll get to, you know, okay. <laughs> <laughs> which I'm sure you, you may know what I'm talking about. That was pretty publicly put on the internet, but <laughs> so, yeah. um, we'll get, we'll get into that. So, but yeah, I never really realized at the time when I was starting to learn how to mess around with this stuff that, uh, it would become my life's career and, you know ultimately what i would end up doing with my life so, so it's kind of so yeah so it's kind of it's kind of cool to kind of think about how I mean, as a kid playing with this stuff to where i am today is just you know the uh, my 16 year old tom thinks you know 37 year old tom is pretty cool we'll put it through that way <laughs> <laughs> yeah definitely the uh, so the very first tour was was it your uncle that sort of shadowed uh did you shadow your uncle on the first tour or was it you just jumping in and so I ended up uh, the first, I, I toured with my own band for a long time, my original band oh, okay. um, yeah. for many years. So, um, and then, uh, you know, certain things happened in my life. Um, you know, I had, I had my son, so it came time to, you know, go, well, what do you do? You know, do I stay on the road trying to, you know, maybe sell some t-shirts, you know, at the Warp Tour or do I, you know, kind of work a day job and, you know, be a dad. So I did the dad thing for a while. Um, I ended up, uh, getting hurt at work, you know, working on semi trucks and 18 wheelers, you know, it's pretty grueling on your body. Um, and I got a phone call one day saying, Hey man, we know that you know how to work on this stuff. Um, we need a guitar technician to come out and help out. Would you be willing to at least come out and give us a hand? And I went, oh, you know what? My son's old enough now. Let me, let me talk to my son. And my kid was like, get the hell out of the house, <laughs> you know, <laughs> go do that. Um, so when I started actually touring professionally, um, my uncle had no, um, influence on that. If you would, it's not like he made a phone call to a buddy and say, Hey, my nephew's uh, looking to go back on tour. What would you want to do? Um, so it was just kind of my own merits on that. Um, but touring was always something that I wanted to do on the crew side, watching him work and, um, that work ethic. Um, so I was always big into the crew life. Um, and then, you know, I got my first run in as a guitar technician and kind of figured out, well, these are my people, you know, this is what I want to do. And, uh, what do I have to do to gain knowledge and, um, you know, be better at my job and, you know, what can I do on that end? Um, then I went down this very, you know, deep rabbit hole of the guitar technician world and, uh, my, my nerding out of, uh, guitar equipment went overboard, if you would. <laughs> <laughs> what was, uh, what was some of those first bands that you started with? 
So I went out with this band called Saving Abel. Um, yep. And uh, I worked with them for quite a while. Um, and those guys taught me, you know, the, the rules of the road, if you would, when being a technician. And, uh, you know, they toured so much that it was, you know, one day we would be in a bus. One day we'd be in a van. The next day we may be renting a couple of SUVs just to go do some regional shows. Uh, but their work ethic was second to none. And these guys would go out and no matter what, put on a rock show. Um, and they had real gear, you know, guitars that were beat up, amplifiers that were beat up. And uh, they had all these guitar changes and whatnot. And it just, those guys taught me a lot of the fundamentals of what I, you know, needed to learn at that time, um, especially being able to make repairs quick. Um, you know, because again, you know, some of this gear would sit in a, in a warehouse for, you know, a few months at a time when it's uh, 103 degrees in Mississippi. And then we have to go to, you know, North Dakota where it's, you know, 70 degrees colder. So things like that. So, I mean, their, their gear got beat up a lot. Um, and, you know, they sweat real bad. So, oh, yeah. but I, I mean, those guys, you know, I owe those guys a lot as far as, you know, getting me my, my sea legs, if you would. Um, and I mean, I did some like, you know, regional stuff for people, uh, some local bands. Uh, obviously I have my repair shop at home. Um, so I kind of took everything I learned from that and just kept going with it. And, uh, you know, I got this phone call from this guy in Michigan one day saying that they needed a guitar technician. And, uh, and I went, okay. And he goes, so they go, what's this band called pop evil? And I went, okay. He goes, yeah, you came highly recommended. You know, we want you to come out and hang out. And, uh, and those guys changed my entire life. Um, you know, the, uh, I mean, was, they taught me pretty much everything that I had before. And some, those guys taught me the meaning of family, um, friendships, values, um, and, you know, evolving of gear and guitars and everything else. And, uh, I was very fortunate to, you know, have such a, a long tenure with those guys and, uh, you know, be able to still call those guys my, you know, some of my best friends and my family. Um, that band taught me how to be a guitar technician. Um, you know, and they were just the awesomest guys. I think I, I've ever gotten to really work for, um, you know, the, uh, they've definitely, you know, made it. So, I mean, they toured enough that it was one of those, I was always busy. Um, when things broke, they didn't, it wasn't just, Oh, okay. Let's, uh, just, Put a new cable in and go from here it was oh hey man you know <laughs> you know this is really broken um you know so it kind of taught me how to move my feet even faster and figure out um you know if something goes wrong on stage with an amplifier uh you know what do you do um and how to how to rectify that quicks you know there, i mean there were times that you know you're going oh hell well that amplifier just shut off how do i get it turned back on without you know something really being noticeable, you know? So, you know, I'm very thankful for those guys and their patience and whatnot. And, uh, but yeah, I mean, those guys taught me really how to, you know, how to move fast and, you know, have a good time with it too. You know, there wasn't the, uh, I always had the stigma of guitar technicians that these guys are just guys wearing black off in a corner and, <laughs> you know, every once in a while they get a guitar thrown at them and they got to catch it and walk away. And that was all you ever saw of them. Um, you know, we're working for uh, those guys. I mean, you know, there's videos of us, you know, on stage, you know, fans will post and it's like, oh, you know, you know, you know, guitar player with crew guy having fun, you know, and it's, uh, you know, and stuff like that, especially in today's society, you know, people have this stigma of rock and roll where it's just, we're all business and that's it, which, yeah. which is true. We, all, we are all business, but we're all also real people too with real feelings and emotions and we're all out here doing the same thing. We all have families at home. And then we have our family on the road and, you yeah. know, that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a real brotherhood. You know, you just can't go out and, right. you know, not have that. So, I mean, I was very fortunate to, you know, be able to work with, uh, you know, you know, Davey was an amazing artist to work for. I have a million and one funny stories with him and I, um, like I said, one of which is about a guitar that got broken in half on stage accidentally. <laughs> um, we'll get to that story when that time comes up for that, but sure. that's, a, sure. that's going to be, that's going to be a good one. There's a, uh, we may have to do a cutaway and you can find the pictures on online of the guitar. Sure. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's a, you know, stuff like that. So, 
I was very fortunate for those guys. Um, and I do, I, I owe the world to that band. So yeah. very, very, for, very fortunate to be able to work with that guy. And, you know, Shelby was just a, he's a great tour manager and, you know, that man really taught me the fundamentals of, you know, you don't have to be blood to be family as well. So, you know, yep. I, I, you know, I've, I've had, I've been fortunate enough to have Shelby on here. We've had, yeah. uh, you know, obviously Brian on here as well. Yep. Uh, I've actually had Matt Dorito on here uh, recently yeah, see? And, yeah. and a few others, but I mean, even the guys from Red Sun Rising when they were Red Sun Rising around here, but you know, the point is there's, I don't know if there's a harder working band than Pop Evil and they yeah. are like so many, so, I mean, some of these, all of you guys are sort of the best of the best. So, I mean, you, they, they produce some excellent crew members just out of the, I mean, just a great band all around, great performances, oh, yeah. great everything. So really cool. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, that's a, I, you know, it's, it's, a, it was a definitely an honor to be part of their family. Um, you know, it's uh, definitely, I mean, I learned so much from just working with those guys and interacting with them. Um, you know, and again, I mean, I'm working with Brian um, and then moving on to still working with Brian. Um, <laughs> and I mean, it's funny, man. I mean, you know, I look at it and it's just one of those, you're right. I mean, these guys, they, you know, they tour so often that, you know, you kind of learn, you know, you can learn how to make a mistake and then learn how to recover from that mistake. Um, and, you know, for me, like I said, fortunately, you know, the, uh, the guys in that band are very uh, forgiving when it comes to that. You know, they all understand that we're all only human um, and that, uh, you know, they, ha they have uh, just this amazing heart. And, you know, they want you to keep learning on your journey and, you know, creating that with them. So, I mean, I can honestly say that's probably why, you know, you get a tour manager like Shelby, who is, you know, one of the elite um a production manager like brian who's one of the elite um so i mean then just the band members yeah, i mean that's all you know i, I mean I don't, I don't know what they have in that water out in michigan but i mean it, it's it must be doing something right <laughs> yeah lee's got i mean lee's just a great front man he's got a great vision oh, amazing. it's just yeah. i mean overall it's just a great team and i think that yeah. a lot of the times when it has when you have a you know a core you know, we'll just say lead person for your group that has those ethics. They want to surround yeah. themselves with similar ethics and similar people of, of quality. Absolutely. So I think that all just kind of speaks for itself right there. Absolutely. Absolutely. I so, mean, Lee's very good. Lee's a very good uh, reading people. Um, yeah. You know, it's one of those, you know, he's just very good at that and he can look at you and tell you right off the rip, whether, you know, you're, you're in or you're out kind of deal. Um, so he's just a great human like that. And, uh, I think it helps too, because he understands that, you know, we all have families at home. Uh, he's very family orientated. Um, so, you know, we'd be on the bus. I mean, and he's asking me how my son's doing and stuff like that. I'd be on FaceTime with my kid and, you know, we're sitting there talking about PlayStation games back and forth with our kids and stuff. So it's, uh, like I said, I mean, those guys really instilled some big values into me, you know, as far as professionalism too. Um, you know, when, uh, like Shelby and I would walk off the bus, we, you know, we're in our pop evil crew shirts and, you know, we'd grown to these big summer festivals and we'd come walking off the bus and people kind of give us that look like, Oh, those, those pop evils guys. All yeah. right. You know, yep. um, I mean, you know, prime example. I mean, the, uh, I know it was pretty well documented. We had uh, a bunch of bus issues on our tour last summer. Um, and, uh, you know, just to give you an idea how great the band and crew were, we were doing a direct support show, show for Shine Down. Um, our bus broke down for about the millionth time. <laughs> um, God bless our bus driver. He, you know, he's got the the patience of a saint. Um, you know, the band knew that I had my diesel background and whatnot. So there were times that uh, you know I would have to wake up at three in the morning to make sure our bus made it to the show. But we'd get there. We'd have a show. Um, but this one particular show, we. Uh, we're about six to seven hours late to load in on an outdoor festival with shine down. And, uh, we made it about an hour and a half before our set to the point where we got there with our bus and we had to drive the bus through the crowd to get backstage to unload. And, uh, you know, people are waving at us, you know, cheering us as they knew, they knew who was coming in. And, uh, the crew that I had behind me at the time is, I mean, these guys are some of the elite of the elite. And, uh, you know, I mean, we, Shelby and I wrangled these guys together with about, I don't know, 10 stagehands. And we 
from the time I think we dumped the trailer, we built our whole show um, behind the opener while they were playing. And it was one of those, I got on stage, plugged the guitars in and kind of gave the old ch -ch -ch each. Went, all right, I got signal, all right. You know, looked at Nick and Dave and, you know, gave him the old fist bump, you know, let's party, let's do this. And they're looking at me like, you got this? And I was like, I hope so. <laughs> and uh, we, we cut one song and that was it. So these guys went out and, uh, you know, so from the time the trailer dumped to the first note, I think it was just a little over an hour. And these guys didn't miss a beat. And we were <laughs> able to enter entertain, I think it was, I don't know, six to 7,000 people at an at a outside show. That's awesome. And that, I mean, so, yeah. <laughs> and you're talking normally, I mean, so when you're loading in, so when you're coming in and loading up and all that stuff, you're talking like good three or four hours between emptying out, sound checking and all that stuff, right? That's right. That's right. That, that we did what was, was a, a, a true throwing go, if you would. Um, we, we didn't even know if, I mean, I turned this gear on and I'm sitting there hoping, man, hope my RF signals are right from yesterday because I have just enough time to, to make sure they're good and, Hopefully this wire is plugged in all the way and well, let me spot tune these guitars and hope for the best. You know, normally I like to change my strings every day, but uh, right. <laughs> let's, let's party, man. And you know, I got to watch my best friends walk out onto that stage and not miss a beat. And I just so remember this, watching. Yep. Go, no, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I, I just remember like looking over, looking on the stage and you know, uh, you know, the guys turn around and look at me and they're just like, <laughs> well, all right. I we're guess good. we're good. And I'm like, I'm like, oh man, Thank you know, God. but you know, I, I do. I mean, I, I attribute that to the, uh, the professionalism of, you know, you know, a leader like Shelby, um, you know, who taught me how to, you know, be, you know, kind of work with stage hands the right way. And, um, you know, help me, uh, you know, come into myself as a stage manager and you know, allow me to make the mistakes to make the things right. Um, you know, and the guys in that band are really kind of build me into a, you know, a guitar technician, you know? Um, so, I mean, and then be able to share that knowledge with people on that crew as well and go, well, Hey man, we have about 45 minutes to make a show happen. When normally it takes us two and a half hours to make a show happen. Let's have fun, That's crazy. you know? Yeah. So. And at those big festivals, I mean, you just, you have no idea cause you're walking. I mean, I've attended several where, Bands are, you know, running late, equipment's yeah. not working, all kinds of weather, everything's a factor and you just have no idea. You can't plan for anything. You just got to nope. use your skills. That's it. That's it. I mean, there's been times we've rolled in and, uh, you know, we've gotten across the border into Canada, you know, got held up at the border for whatever reason. And we still have to make a three hour drive to a festival and make a show happen. So, you know, it's kind of one of those, once you learn how to take a deep breath and kind of go come up with a game plan while this is all happening um, and make sure things go off without a hitch, you know, and if things aren't going right, how to make it right without uh, the people around you knowing that you're internally freaking out. Um, you know, and again, that's where a strong leadership comes into play and, you know, dealing with, you know, working with, you know, like I said, people like Shelby, people like Brian, um, guys that are, you know, so used to working under the gun and, you know, coming out on top, you know, the, uh, and like I said, just, just being able to learn from those guys kind of really, you know, kind of helped out along the way. So, and, but watching yeah. these guys, you know, or even other guys, you know, uh, uh, watching Charlie from shine down their stage manager. I mean, that's another, another big guy. Um, you know, when I was out with bad wolves, the, uh, the stage manager from Papa road to drew was another guy, you know, we had a, an issue with a semi truck breaking down and, you know, that was a, a prime example of we have to make a show happen. And, you know, there's, you know, these bands on this crew and small, you know, each you know, crew had a, you know, there was only a few of us and Papa Roach's semi broke down. We made a show happen. That semi got there an hour and a half before doors and we made it happen. You know, the whole crew came together and, you know, we had guys, you know, Drew was their stage manager and he was guiding one set of hands. He knew I was a stage manager, so I'm guiding a whole nother set of hands. And, you know, I, I, he's dumping a truck, I'm receiving the truck and we're kind of guiding everything around. And that those fans in that crowd had no idea that that truck just showed up. And I still had to get my own band that I was working for on stage and sound checked at the same time. So I would just say it's, it's the opportunity to work with people like that and you know, kind of make chaos into reality and fun for everybody. You know, it's, it's an interesting thing. 
So I'm very fortunate for that. Yeah, turn chaos into art. <laughs> That's it. So That's it. So when it comes to your so at at that time with when you're you're sort of getting started with Pop Evil, kind of learning your process, yep. you're guitar teching for them. Is that right? That's correct. Yep. Yeah. So walk me through or walk us through what what is what is your duties as a guitar tech? I mean, you've talked about a ton of stuff outside <laughs> of that, but what is your yep. specific duties as a guitar tech? So um let's see here. Um or what I bet yet, tell me what is <laughs> What is your schedule like when you're on a show so, as a guitar tech? What is your day? So, like? so, so, so my day to day, um, we'll use, uh, we'll go with Poppy, for instance. Sure. Um, the, uh, you know, we load in at 10 o'clock in the morning, um, or, uh, you know, anywhere between 10 and noon, depending on, on the venue. Um, you know, we get in, um, I was also the stage manager. So, you know, it was getting things in line, getting things placed, the stage accurate, you know, all lined up, um, uh, making sure risers are built. Um, and then my day to day, as far as being the technician is, you know, making sure things are working properly. Um, you know, changing strings. Um, there's nothing worse than, you know, your, your boss gets one lead the entire night and goes to hit that one note and ping, there's nothing worse than that. Yeah. So, you know, we, we try to avoid that kind of stuff. So, you know, I like to do, I like to change strings all the time. Um, so <laughs> Changing strings, making sure the guitar is still set up the right way. Um, a band like Pop Evil, you know, you're going through, we're in Daytona Beach one day, and then it's uh, freezing cold the next. You know, we're on a fly day to wherever, let's say uh, Alaska, you know, isn't it, for example, that, that, that didn't happen, but um, it can be climate change is that drastic. Um, so guitar is kind of, they're pieces of wood. You know, even though they're cut into a guitar shape and everything else, wood still is alive and changes with, you know, climate. So there's always something that can go wrong with that. Um, but yeah, it's just the upkeep and the maintenance on the instrument. Um, you know, some days you get guys that, uh, like Roman from Ginger, likes to, uh, he's a tone chaser. So it was something new every day on, my, on the Ginger tour. Um, you know, we were changing pickups. We were changing wiring configurations. Um, let's see here. What else did I change? Speakers and cabinets. Yeah. Um, doing different biases on amplifiers. So, I mean, it can be a wide range of things. Um, you know, like I said, I'm very fortunate to have uh, had the pandemic to do a lot of studying on <laughs> circuitry and uh, woodworking and everything else that I could kind of come into these bands and, you know, they come with these crazy ideas and I'm like, oh, that sounds like a blast. Let's do that. Um, so, you know, my day to day can you know be as simple as setting up a guitar amplifier and putting some strings on a guitar or as complex as, Hey man, uh, I just blew out the power section of my amplifier. Uh, we need it for tonight. We can't get a, a rental in. I can, I need you to fix that tonight. Okay, cool. You know, so, um, things like that, you know, so it, it can, it can vary depending on what it is. <laughs> right. And so, and so the band's performing, you know, they're doing their show, you're side stage ready for whatever may happen, ready to roll, yeah. swapping out guitars. Cause a lot of times I think a lot of bands use multiple guitars for different tunings and stuff like that. Correct. So you have to have them all prepped and, and ready to go and ready to swap and all that stuff. Yep. Um, when the show's over, when the show's done, I assume you're grabbing stuff and packing things up and That's closing it. up yeah. and all that stuff? Yep. You know, I'm, I'm making sure everything gets put away properly. So when we put it in the semi or in the trailer, um, you know, it's, uh, it doesn't get broken during shipping, you know, to the next yeah. city. Uh, there's nothing worse than uh, having a stagehand, you know, or whomever, someone trying to help, you know, pack your guitar gear up and... Uh, and they don't do it the right way and you get to the next city and you open up your guitar vault and nothing's strapped down and you have things that are broken or misplaced, um, yeah. which, which has happened, unfortunately. Um, you know, and then you just have to kind of figure out how to make the best of it and, you know, make it work. Um, and again, I mean, as a guitar player, there's nothing worse than having someone come up to you and say, hey, man, so this got left in the last city uh, or, hey, this got broken, you know, oh, yeah. what, and you're like, oh, what do you do now? Uh, but it's where you, it's, you know, yeah, the recovery that you come back from that, I guess, is what all yep. you can do. So, I mean, like I said, I've been very fortunate that uh, I've always had pretty good stage hands and 
um, you know, great crew guys that are always, you know, there's always a dummy check done. And, um, you know, we've never had, to, I've never opened up a guitar vault and been like, well then, oh, <laughs> six out of eight guitars are smashed in half because they get strapped down to the wall and semi, you know? So <laughs> I've heard horror yeah. stories about that though. Oh yeah. So, I bet. you know, that's a, that's always a fun time. When it comes to, I asked Shelby this a while back and uh, I said, so what was it like the first time you actually were sleeping and living on a bus, you know, from going from <laughs> never doing that to actually doing that the first time? Was there, was there an adjustment for you? So you know, the, yes, there was a, uh, you know, I remember I just look at it back in the days of going from being in a van to, uh, you know, uh, being in my own band, getting like an RV or a bandwagon. And back then these things were kind of pretty new. Uh, um, so at that time, you know, uh, the bandwagon, I not quite perfected some things yet. So, you know, those things are, they're great if I'm on a, that touring level. Um, you know, as long as the U-bolts on the bodies are tightened all the way and, you know, the driver doesn't hit a bump and the whole thing kind of shifts on you. That yeah. was that was my first big adjustment of going, man, maybe I need to reevaluate what I'm doing in life. Um, and then when I started touring on the national level as a tech and getting into buses, um, you know, it, it's it's an interesting thing sleeping backwards doing 65 miles an hour. That's a, uh, you know, depending on where you are in the food chain on the bus too, you know, you can be on the bottom, you can be all the way on the top. Um, you know, which is I, which I'm is a, better, which is better or worse. So I usually like to be on the bottom, uh, depending on the time of year. Um, oh, really? <laughs> and when I say depending on the time of year, if you're on the bottom bunk over the generator or in the summer, uh, um, that can get pretty hot. Um, and if you're on the top bunk, depending on the time of year, you know, uh, and you have a, a driver who may be going a little too fast, you kind of know you're going too fast into a corner, depending on how good your bus is as well. Um, but I don't, I don't mind the, uh, the, the penthouse suite, if you would, uh, yeah. you know, <laughs> I don't, I don't mind being on a ton of bunk, but, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's an interesting thing though, especially, you know, you're trying to, if you're on a top bunk, you know, you kind of got to scale up there, you know, and, yeah, I mean, I'm only five foot seven, so it's kind of, you know, getting on that top bunk can be interesting sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, but, uh, it, yeah, I was going to say, Shelby said that. Uh, he said that when it comes to sleeping on the bus, he goes, he, that is the best sleep he gets all year round. He goes, when he's, he's home, not, he, he's he, not when wrong. Yeah. When you're on the bus, it's the best sleep you get. Uh, he's not wrong. I mean, it can get, uh, it can get pretty grueling sometimes. I mean, like I said, especially, you know, if you're, the bus is having mechanical issues, like with the air condition, oh, right, uh, right. You, know, right. you know, stuff like that, you know, you get, you get 12 people on a bus and the AC goes out or, you get guys that are, uh, or certain bands that like it hot and, yeah. and it shouldn't be hot. Um, <laughs> that, which is a thing, uh, you know, yeah. I'm always a, uh, I'm a, I'm a firm 68 degree AC kind of person, you know, yeah, me, me too. you know, I, you know I, I don't like that. If it's so, if it's 75 degrees, I don't want to be part of you on your terrarium. You know what I mean? I'm not okay right. with that. <laughs> you know, yep, same here. Yeah. Uh, so, but yeah, I mean, he's absolutely right. I mean, you know, you get in a, a smooth riding bus and you get in that bunk and you put your AirPods in or, uh, you know, just noise canceling headphones. And I mean, I've gone to bed in a bus and I've woken up the next day and I've never gotten better safety. You know, when I come home, it's always this vicious cycle of coming home from being on tour. Um, fortunately, when I come home, it's very briefly, um, yeah. you know, a little, little quick first, by the time I get adjusted to not having my house move, you know, doing 60 miles an hour with me in it. <laughs> um, I'm back on the road, but, yep. uh, so it is, it's very, it's a good sleep for me. I, I, it's the most peaceful sleep for me. I mean, getting on a bus is, you know, definitely is Zen like, so yeah. you know, definitely. I mean, it's, he's not wrong, especially you get the vents blown the right way in there. You're out. <laughs> yep. Nice. Nice. So, uh, so guitar, you're guitar teching for pop evil. Are, yep. is, is that, is Pop Evil, Pop Evil the band you started stage uh, managing for? Uh, so I originally started, the first band I stage managed for was Saving Able. Um, oh, okay. All right. So I, I, you know, I got into doing it on that. And then and I said, fortunately, you know, I've worked my way up in the ranks as far as bands go. So being able to take things I've learned in the past and build on them and uh, going on tour with other bands and watching how some of these 
you know, big arena bands put on their productions and working with their guys and just show, you know, studying how they work and, you know, uh, their ethic, you know, it's kind of helped me build, uh, you know, that kind of, um, you know, uh, chemistry and energy and stuff like that. And to bring to my own, you know, my own uh, way of doing things. Right. So, yeah. What is, what's, so what is the duties of stage manager? So that can be a lot of different things. Um, right. <laughs> you know, the, you're, you're basically, you're in charge of the trailer pack, um, the overall time of the show from, you know, when you get there to the openers, loading on the opening bands, the support bands, making sure they stay on time, uh, making sure changeovers are on time and correct. Um, safety is a big thing. Um, you know, making sure that, you know, you, you know, like prime example for Rockville, we were shooting pyro off at Rockville. Um, you know, you got to make sure that stuff's right. So no one gets hurt. Um, you know, making sure you're up to fire code. If you know, the people are going to do a walkthrough, you have to walk through with them. Um, you know, guiding the stage hands, you know, being a, not being a dick to the stage hands is always a big thing too. You know, you get more bees with honey. Um, so, yeah. you know, you know, the, uh, it kind of works that way. So you're kind of that guy when it comes to, you're the overseer of that. You know, I know from, you know, you got the, the people that uh, the production manager oversees one section of the show. And then from that time that, that, that deck that the, those bands are on, you know, I own that. But if something goes wrong on that stage, I'm the go, I'm the go-to guy. Um, oh, okay. That can be any, that can be anything that could be why wasn't this cable put down securely? Um, you know, why wasn't this rigged correctly? Stuff like that. Why, why wasn't the, back, the backdrop put up the right way? Why aren't we perfectly straight today? Um, you know, and making sure, like I said, your support bands are well taken care of as well. Um, so it can be a lot of different roles that you're, when you're in the stage manager. Yeah. And you've been doing, Definitely. you've been, you've been working with Pop Evil so, for several, several years. Mm. Uh, what other, uh, where, where uh, or what other acts are you, have you worked with since then? So I have, let's see here. I have worked for Ginger. Um, yep. I'm their okay. guitar technician, stage manager. Um, I've gotten to go, I've, uh, went out with Bad Wolves. Um, yep. uh, Suicide Silence. I'm actually going to Europe with them next week. Nice. Um, and then more recently I have taken over the, the, a guitar technician role for in this moment. Yep. So I've, I've been very fortunate to work with some incredible people in my, in my career. Um, and so, most of those bands are two guitar bands, if I'm not mistaken. Correct. The only one that is not is ginger. Um, okay. And, right, uh, yeah. So, but they, uh, those guys bring in a whole different element of things. And, uh, you know, Eugene, their bass player is, uh, I mean, he is not just a bass player. I'll put it through that way. I mean, that, I mean, it was, uh, watching that man play is something unreal. It's just one of those things that if you've never seen it, you have to go watch it. Um, you know, the, the way that these guys play and write is just next level. I've never seen anything like yeah. that in my life. Um, yeah, so, 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 so talented. So for, for people watching, if they don't know, Ginger is a brand new, well, I, I'll, brand new to them, obviously. They're, they're a newer band, really killer band, but they're also out of Ukraine. Correct, they are. Which, which has been un, you know, unfortunate for them with everything going on. Yeah. They had a big tour scheduled for, what, this year, and that got canceled yeah. due to everything yeah. going on. Oh, yeah. So, so I mean, uh, um, what a what a... I was gonna say weird, but really, what a tragic situation they're in oh, super, with their home super. country being invaded and all that stuff. But and they, you know, stopped touring to be in their country and you know do what they can to help, which is amazing. Yeah, they actually it, it just came out. Um, you know, they did the press release I think yesterday. Um, they had been given the opportunity to leave uh, Ukraine and tour on a humanitarian mission to educate the masses of what's actually happening in Ukraine. Um, and, uh, you know, as you know, and, you know, make uh, income for their country to, uh, to put back into circulation as far as donations and everything else. Um, you now these guys, you know, we were supposed to go out and do a massive support tour with Slipknot and in this moment, um, 
And, uh, you know, that was uh, a week before we were set to fly out for pre-production, you know, this very, you know, this terrible war broke out for absolutely no reason. Um, you know, and, you know, watching that unfold and, and these guys are some of my best friends. So aside from that, they're colleagues of mine. You know, these are people that I lived on a bus with and, you know, we chat all the time and we, you know, you know, we have amazing stories together. So it's kind of, you know, watching that happen was, you know, you know, just, it crushed me. Um, there's people that I love and care about. And, uh, so, you know, watching them be able to go from being in that, that, uh, that musician mode to, you know, you know, patriotic mode and humanitarian roles and watching them take their, their hard earned living and, taking that money and buying generators for people, uh, providing care to people, buying groceries for, you know, people that know they, they don't even know, you know, just to help out. Um, I mean, that just show it goes to show you, you know, the, the kind hearted people that they actually truly are. Um, yeah. so, I mean, it's when they, when they said that they were going to be able to go out and do what they do best and, uh, play music again and support of their country. Um, that's pretty magical. Um, so they do, I know that they have some, uh, some European dates that they're, they're actually heading out right now to go do. Um, so, you know, the, are you uh, going to be part of that at all? Um, not on this leg. Um, they're, we're working on some stuff for, uh, later on. Um, so hopefully we'll, I'll be able to go help them out with that. Um, you know, I know this is kind of popped up out of nowhere that they were able to go do this. So yeah, we're kind of basing it off that, you know, taking it, you know, you know, a l- little bit at a time, you know, taking it by ear. Yeah, and for you know, f- for the members of the band, uh, I just want to say I think they're fantastic, and you know, I I really wish them absolute you know success, and you know, wish them the best for their country. And you know, it's it's horrible to watch this from afar. Oh, it's I know. Just, it's such a strange situation, but also such a terrible. It's so bad to see this, and you know, mm. you know, I'm definitely definitely uh, heartbroken by what's going on for them. So I, I wish them yeah. the best. Everyone oh, absolutely. There. Absolutely. Yeah. It was, that was definitely a, a first for me. You know, it's, uh, people kind of can turn on CNN and see this stuff and they all, Oh, that sucks. It doesn't affect me. And then, right. you know, which is a majority of the world news. People see something happening in another country. And they're like, Oh, you know, Oh, okay. And then they scan to the next channel or whatever. And then something like that, you know, you see something on that and you're like, Oh my God, you know, you know, I'm, I'm getting ready. I'm picking up my phone. Hey, are you okay? You right. know, and I, I, ne- I never thought in a million years that I would be, you know, turning on the news and, you know, right after I've talked to one of the guys in the band and, you know, going, oh my God, they just, Russia just they declared war on Ukraine. They're firing missiles at my friends. What? what? Is this real yeah. life? You know, I right. never in a million years would have thought that. So, yeah, it, it makes you take a big step back at how, how our lives are. And, you know, just because... You know, we have these great freedoms and the ability, like you and I are sitting right here on FaceTime, you know, talking about rock and roll and whatnot that, you know, people don't get to do that. And this yeah. is certain things that some of us may take for granted. And, you know, these people have, you know, they some don't even have a phone right now or internet because of, of that. So it's wild, man. It's wild. I never yeah. thought I'd ever, you know, have to be like, wow, wow. Those are these people that I actually know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and I, I would I would encourage everyone who's watching this to, you know, at least check them out. You know, buy a song from them or do buy the album, buy do something, Absolutely. buy a shirt, just do something to support them because you know they're an excellent, excellent band, and it's very they do they they, they do have on their website right now um, some shirts for sale that I believe all the hundred percent of the proceeds go to uh, Ukraine to help them, uh, you know, with uh, what's going on over there and give back to those communities and the people that are in need over there that uh, they don't have a house to go to anymore or right. they, you know, they don't have food or power and uh, that's what all those donations will go for. So, yeah, you know, if anyone ginger, can get ginger with a J, J, ginger with a J, J, I, N, J, E, R, J, I, N, J, E, R. Yes, that's right. There you go. Go check them out. They're the really, really good. Hey, thanks for watching part one of our interview with Tom Raritan. We hope you enjoyed it. You can check out our other guests, all our other episodes at all your favorite podcast locations and on YouTube. Search for Tales from the Pit podcast 
remember to like and subscribe. And you can also check out our website at talesfromthepit.net. We'll see you next time.